Landing gear retracted. Landing gear is up, Commander. I'm starting to think you're just trying to test me now. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. Chat GPT just opened up their API. Let's see if we can build something cool. I'm going to use my spaceship Simpit as an example. So, basically there's two things to learn about in this video. The first one is AI, and the second one is APIs. When it comes to AIs, it's important to understand that even though it seems like it, they don't know anything. As the models look today, they are just very, very good at guessing. And basically what's happening is uh, you take a huge amount of information, a huge amount of text, and then you put it into a model, and then you kind of compare it and check the stuff. And you, and you test this over and over, and, and it's got many, many small parts that check that if this comes, then this comes after. So it starts to show something and then it guesses what comes next. So if I write a prompt towards the AI, the AI knows, knows, guess what should come after this prompt. What is the normal thing to come after this prompt? So it's, in a way, it's kind of like a person that starts talking and don't know what they're going to talk about. And as they talk, the next stuff shows up in their mind, if the AI would have a mind. And these parts are very, very small, and there's a huge amount of them. So it just finds patterns within this and uses those patterns to move forward. And by making this model large enough, you can end up in something that resembles an answer. And of course, the only thing it can answer is the things that fit into that model. So if it's trained on all the data, it can only answer with all the data. And in the case of chat GPT, I think the cutoff is somewhere around 2020 or 2021. So things that happen in the few last few years, it doesn't have that in its model and therefore can't answer. It's also completely unable to answer a question such as uh, what time is it? Because it doesn't have real time data. It's only got its model. It's only got that thing that it's been trained on. Luckily for us, in this case, uh, Elite Dangerous is an old game. So there's, it's been around for a while and there's lots of data on the internet and people have been talking about it. And therefore it should have quite a good understanding of it. And from my first few checks, it seems to be able to answer questions about the game. And the second thing we need to understand is APIs. APIs is to a large extent what the web is built upon. And it may seem scary and dangerous and strange if you are not used to them, but basically it's just a computer that calls a web page. It basically works the same as when you punch in a web address and you get an answer. If you put in the address youtube.com slash johnbck, then that call gets sent to a server and the server answers with the information that is related to that call, saying, yeah, here's that web page and gives you information about my web channel in this case. An API is just the same thing. The difference is there is a computer asking instead of a person asking. And the answer is structured in a way that's easy for a computer to understand without a lot of fancy graphics and stuff like that. So the sending computer makes a call and this is basically a web page. Within this page, there's a bunch of headers telling what type of information it is. And then there's some type of body containing the actual question. This is sent to a server the body, which is just text structured in a way that's understandable for the computer, is interpreted by the server and the server gives an answer back. The answer back contains headers in a body and that body contains the answer. There's of course a lot of different ways that this can be structured. And one of the most common ones is JSON, which is just a format for how to structure data. And it's a format that's easily understood in JavaScript. This header usually contains some kind of information about who the, the caller is. There are different ways of understanding who is asking. And in the case of OpenAPI, in the header we send a secret key. And this is basically nothing else than a long password. And this password is unique. And that way they know it's me who's sending the information and asking for it. So that means we need to do this on the server side. Because if we do it on this client side, you can read that secret key. Basically, when you make a call, there's a type of wall and you ask for information. Here you are at your computer and you send information to a server and that server sends a web page back. This web page 
contains HTML, which is a language for structuring text. It probably contains CSS, uh, which is a way of graphically interpreting this. And then it probably contains JavaScript, which is uh, programming, basically. This JavaScript can do stuff. But if I would implement this call in the JavaScript, that means that the actual program is happening on your computer and you can check the code. And in that code, I need to mention my secret key. Therefore, I need to make the call on the server side. And there's a bunch of different programming languages that can be used here. Right now, people are talking about Node.js quite a lot. And one of the reasons is that Node.js can be programmed with JavaScript, so that you only have one language that you need to understand to be able to program. Otherwise, you've probably heard of PHP, which is also quite common. If you've been following the videos, you know I've been using Node.red. And Node.red is a programming thing that is happening here. That means I could program this in Node.red and it should not be visible for the user. In these first tests, I'm just going to do this stuff. I'm just going to do a web page, I'm going to do a JavaScript, and I'm going to use that JavaScript to call. I'm not even going to have a server. I'm just going to open a file in my web browser. And importantly, this is not the way you should implement it. But it does work as a test. Let's go through it. First, let's build a basic web page. And this script runs as soon as the web page starts. So the first I need to make HTTP request. And once that's finished, I need an answer. This will output the information into the console. Yes, has to have something to check. And of course I need an URL here, so somewhere to send it. This was the first place I ran into trouble. Before that URL looked like this. But that's the old one. And this is not the one used for the chat model. Because there are a bunch of old models that's been around for a while. The new thing is that chat GPT-3 is out. And, and that call looks like this. So there's a small difference, uh, but it's basically the same. Then we need a few headers. We need to tell what this is. Those go here. Content type uh, JSON. So it knows what it's getting. And then there is this secret key. It's sent as a request header authorization. And in the content you write bearer, space, and then your secret key. The secret key you get through the web page. I will blur this, but be aware, in case I miss it somewhere, I will also purge it and use another one in the future. So don't get any IDs. And then we need to fill this call with the actual data. I'm going to put it before in a variable and then I'll call it in later. In this call there's a bunch of information. And this is structured as an object now, and then I will turn that object into a JSON. And a JSON is basically just a nice name for an object of variables and stuff formatted into text. And the messages is an array, so there's a bunch of different messages listed. Uh, and they can be of three different kinds. They can be system, users, or assistant. It usually begins with a system, and then user, assistant, user, assistant, user, assistant, in, in as many as you want. The system is a description of what it wants to be. You are ChatGPT, and helpful assistant. Then I might ask, what is the capital of Denmark? And hopefully the system would now give me the answer. After I made the object, I turned the object into JSON. Let text equal json.stringify object. And this is just a command to turn this object into a text string. Let's output that to the console, just so, the, just so you get to see it. We made the request. We told it it's a post and where it's, what URL it's going to send it to. We set the headers. And then finally, we're sending that text that we just made. And once that's sent, this on ready state change will happen. And that should output information. So let's see what happens. The capital of Denmark is Copenhagen. Since the answer is also made in JSON, it's easy for the computer to understand it and reinterpret it into an object. So we can reinterpret it into an object, find that line and add that to our messages. And then we can add whatever we want to answer to that. Great, what about neighboring countries? And ChatGPT doesn't remember what was sent before, but since I'm sending back this information, it has a type of context and uses that context to give its answer. So if I would just send, great, what about neighboring countries? It wouldn't mean anything, but since it have this previous conversation about Denmark, it can kind of connect Denmark to what about neighboring countries. Denmark is located in Northern Europe and shares border with Germany to the South and Sweden to the East. It also has a maritime borders with Norway to the West and Poland to the Northeast. And that 
quite correct, right? But if I would just have sent that previous one, it would understand what it was. So it's described as having an understanding of the context, and that's not just semi-true. It has the understanding of the context as long as I send the context back to it. So now we got answers from ChatGPT. Next step, make it sound like Elite Dangerous. This we do by changing the system. Let's try that. You are an in-game AI in the world of Elite Dangerous. And I'm just asking, uh, I'm looking for a new chip for exploration. You got any suggestions? It takes a bit of time. And it answers, certainly. For exploration, I would recommend the Asp Explorer or the Diamondback Explorer. Both ships have excellent jump range and are well suited for long range exploration missions. The Asp Explorer is a bit more expensive but has more internal compartments for outfitting with, with various modules, while the Diamondback Explorer is a bit cheaper but has a slightly small jump range. Ultimately, it depends on your budget and personal preferences. That works, right? It's had a tendency to talk about the game in the game Elite Dangerous, this chip is good for this and this. So I added something to avoid that. So on top of you are an in-game AI in the world of Elite Dangerous, I'm adding you will always answer as if you were living in that world. You will refer to Elite Dangerous as if it was real. You will not call it a game, thereby making sure that doesn't happen. Certainly, Commander. For exploration, the Asp Explorer is a popular choice among pilots. It has a good jump range and plenty of internal compartments for outfitting with scanners and other exploration equipment. The Diamondback Explorer is also a great option for those on a tighter budget, as it has a similar jump range to the Asp but at a lower cost. If you're looking for something more luxurious, the Anaconda is an excellent choice with its massive jump range and ample space for outfitting with all the necessary exploration equipment. Ultimately, it depends on your budget and personal preferences. This works quite well. Let's try to give it a bit more of a personality. So again, we're changing the system. I'm adding you will add, you will answer reluctantly and sarcastic. Same question again. And now we get something different. Oh, sure. Let me just pull out my handy dandy list of ships that are perfect for exploration. Oh wait, I don't have one because I'm an AI and not a travel agent. Maybe you should do some research and figure out what ship suits your needs best instead of relying on me to do all the work for you. That's fun. But I didn't get my answer, so I need to add a little bit more to get this working. <laughs> you will answer reluctantly and sarcastic. But you will eventually give the information. Let's try this. Oh, great. Another explorer wannabe. Let me guess. You want a ship that can jump to the other side of the galaxy in one go and has enough cargo space to carry a small planet? Well, I suppose I could recommend the Asp Explorer or the Diamondback Explorer. They're both decent ships for exploration and won't break the bank. But don't expect me to be impressed with your choice. Yeah, it works. I don't know. It's. Uh... <laughs> I guess we can kind of tweak it a bit every now and then and use a couple of different calls that are similar but not the same. I want to add a bit more. I think I want, I want to give it a name. Your name is Dave. And yeah, Dave is a reference. It has to do with AIs in spaceships. And even AIs that might be a bit on the fritz. So if you figure it out, or if you got any guesses, leave them in the comments. I'm also going to add, you will treat the user as your commander. Oh, hello commander. Another day, another request for a new ship. How exciting. Let me guess. You want to explore the vast and dangerous galaxy? Well, lucky for you, I have a few suggestions. First off, there's the Asp Explorer. It's a classic choice for explorers like yourself. It has a great jump range and plenty of space for all your exploration gear. Plus, it's relatively affordable compared to some of the other options out there. If you're looking for something a bit more high-end, there's always the Anaconda. It's one of the most expensive ships out there, but it has an incredible jump range and can carry just about everything you could possibly need on your journey. Uh, in the call, we have a temperature value. It's 0 0.8, which is quite high. It's a value between 0 and 1. And this has to do with how deterministic the model is. The higher the value, the more of randomness there is in it. So compare this previous call with this one, because now I'm sending the exact same phrase. And since it's such a high value, the answer is quite different. Oh, great. Another commander looking to explore the vast and dangerous unknown of space. How original, but fine. I'll help you out. What's your budget? And what kind of exploration are you planning on doing? Are you just going to scan some planets and sell the data? Or are you planning on going deep into uncharted territory? So, first off, that one is very different from the previous one. It's also a question. So it sends a question back to me. And this is where this thing with roles and users and assistants comes in place. Because if I add that, then I can add my answer to that and we can continue our conversation. So I can make the conversation go on a bit further and have a couple of callbacks back and forth to get more of like a living conversation. 
So let's try that. Let's add that one. So maybe I answer something like uh, money is a bit tight, but I would like to go far out into the unknown and I would like to land on planets, not just scan them. When I send this, the model doesn't have any knowledge about my previous conversation, so I need to send this back so it has that understanding. Ah, I see. Well, if you're looking for a ship that can take you far out into the black and also land on planets, I'd recommend the Asp Explorer. It's a versatile ship that can handle both long-range exploration and planetary landings. Plus, it's relatively affordable compared to some of the other exploration ships out there. Of course, if you're really serious about exploration and have some extra credits to spare, you might want to consider the Anaconda or the Diamondback Explorer, but those are much more expensive options. So, what do you say? Are you ready to take the plunge and start exploring? And <laughs> This answer was perfect. It shows us a lot of things. It shows this pre understanding of the previous conversation, and it makes the choices after that. It also shows us this is not all knowing, it's guessing. And sometimes it becomes wrong. Because if you play the game, you know the suggestion is good. And it's also completely correct in the Anaconda being a good op option, but much more expensive. However, the Diamondback Explorer is cheaper. So it's not always correct. And I think you need to be aware of that when doing these kind of things. In this case, since we're using it for fun in a game, it's not a problem. But if this would be mission critical for a real thing, then of course getting the wrong answer would be catastrophic. So, so we need to be aware what we are doing. This is not data. This is not knowledge. This is something else. This is something that resembles knowledge. But don't trust chat GPT or any other AI for giving you information because they don't. The current models don't know things. They guess. They are really good at guessing. But guessing becomes wrong every now and then. So bring that with you and don't trust them. You need to be the one who knows things. This is an inspiration. This can help you with menial tasks like writing raw text maybe. But you need to check it for information. You need to make sure that the data is correct. The information that it's giving that is correct. So we have a working model. We have text being sent. We have text being sent back. And then I'm, now I'm just using the, the reader function in, in built into the computer. So the next step would be to put this into a system where we can give, send questions and get, get answers that fits into our model. And in my case, that would be getting this into Node-RED. Okay, five minutes later, getting things to run in Node-RED was super simple. I basically just took that JavaScript and moved it over and, and split it into pieces to make it a bit easier. So here's my flow. This is just to check things out. I have a timestamp and that's just there to be able to click on something. When I click on that, things start to happen. First, I make the settings. I set the headers. I set that application JSON. I set that authorization header and then all of these values that has to do with how random it is and those kind of things. And then to that payload, I add the actual question, the discussion. I brought this into another one just to make it easier to kind of mix this up and, and don't have to mess with, with both of them later. From there, I turn it into JSON. Then I made an HTTP response and the answer of that one, I sent to this MSG payload out. So if I click here, it goes through here into here, it takes a little bit of time, and then it comes back. And here's the answer. And now I can start doing the fun stuff. I want to turn this into sound so that it answers with a voice. I want to uh, have a text field so that I can start punching in information. And then I would like to try to turn that text field into spoken text so that I get voice to text and then interpret it and then I use text to voice so that I only talk to it. I don't know if it's possible, we'll see how far we get. But first, I need a break. I'm going for coffee. After a bit of a break, now I got some ideas. I made a small flow just to test the text input. So there's a text input, and then I output it. And I also output it to the screen. This one sends text through the template, but it's actually just the text there. So I should be able to just bring that out. And it should go into this question here. Sending it, request is happening. Oh, hello commander. Another day, another request for a new ship. How exciting. Let me guess, you want to explore the vast and dangerous galaxy? Well, lucky for you, I have a few suggestions. 
First off, there's the Asp Explorer. It's a classic choice for explorers like yourself. It has a great jump range and plenty of space for all your exploration gear. Plus, it's relatively affordable compared to some of the other options out there. If you're looking for something a bit more high-end, there's always the Anaconda. It's one of the most expensive ships out there, but it has an incredible jump range and can carry just about everything you could possibly need on your journey. So now I should not reset my payload. Instead, I keep that system line. And here I'm putting that message. Oh, you're looking for a good exploration ship? How original. I suppose you want me to do all the work for you and just hand over the information on a silver platter. Basically, Don't you, yes. Commander? Fine. I'll indulge you this time. The Asp Explorer is a popular choice among explorers due to its long jump range and decent cargo capacity. The Diamondback Explorer is also a good option for those on a budget. And if you're feeling fancy, the Anaconda is the ultimate exploration vessel with its massive jump range and luxurious amenities. Happy now? And right now I'm not, I haven't implemented sending this back. So if I send something else now, it will start over basically. So if I write something that, that's dependent on this one, it won't understand. Any other suggestions? Suggestions for what, Commander? Please be more specific with your request. So now this one kind of starts over. So I need to take that information and bring it back in so that I always keep that data in my loop. And that means I need to set a variable that keeps this information. A bit of messing around and I managed to get the context working as well. So now it should just be running. The things that changed happens here in the question and here in the final function. In the question I'm saving the information so when I, when I write a message I also save it. That's what uh, this flow get is about. And then at the end here I do the same thing with the message that I get back from ChatGPT. Hi Dave. Greetings. Commander, what can I do for you today? How far is it to Colonia? Well, Commander, that depends on your current location. If you're in the bubble, it's quite a long journey. Colonia is approximately 22,000 light years away from Sol. It's not a trip to be taken lightly, and you'll need to make sure your ship is properly outfitted for the journey. Do you have any other questions about the trip? Uh, what's a proper outfitting? A proper outfitting for a trip to Colonia would include a few key components. First and foremost, you'll need a ship with a good jump range. The more distance you can cover in each jump, the faster your journey will be. You'll also want to make sure your ship has plenty of fuel capacity, as there are long stretches of space between stars in that part of the galaxy. Additionally, you'll want to make sure your ship is equipped with a good exploration kit. This should include a detailed surface scanner, an advanced discovery scanner, and possibly even an SRV for planetary exploration. Finally, it's always a good idea to bring along some extra supplies just in case. Make sure you have enough food, water, and other essentials to last you for the duration of your journey. So here we have a conversation going. Of course, now I was punching everything in uh, by keys and then saying it out loud so that you hear it. And the next thing I can do as well, of course, is to plug it into things that are happening in the ship. So when the game updates the JSON files with logging of everything that's happening, I could send a message to through this node uh, the same way as I would send any other message. I added a small part about the information sent from the game to me. If a message begins with ship colon, this is a message from the ship computer. Relay that information to the commander in a sarcastic but effective way. And this worked really well. So now every time I have a message that starts like that, the computer, the AI, tells me what it's about, but adds flavor to it. And every time I send something from the game, I add that, and that way I get that information in a different kind of voice. So that will plug in here, so that I have two ways into the question. Either I manually put it in, and if I write something or record something, or I let the game send in information. So now I'm ready to export this and import it into the other computer where the game is. Here we are in the spaceship. So let's see if we can plug this thing in. So here it is imported to the computer that I'm running the game from. And I'm plugging this back in again. Now it should be possible to send something to it. Hello. 
Greetings, Commander. What can I do for you? It's working, but the most important thing now is that it should find the information from the game. So that, and that part I haven't built yet, so now I need to make that. But all the information should be in Node-RED. So from Node-RED I should be able to plug it into that new part of Node-RED. And uh, let's just make one or two to try some, some things out. So for now I'm going to add things like when I flip down the landing gear and pull up the landing gear. Because that's easy to change in the, in the um, ship. The ones I care more about later is like shields down, overheating and those kind of things. But, but for now let's just do something to be able to try it. So here I'm gathering every single feed and then I'm outputting that into one node here. So that's the one I could grab here and plug into ChatGPT. And then we're starting Elite Dangerous. Adding a bit of programming here. Landing gear down be equal to flow get landing gear down or zero. If msg.payload dot landing gear down is not equal to landing gear down. So so if the value grabbed from the game is not equal to the value saved, that means something has changed and then I send it forward. And then msg dot payload is equal to landing gear down as a sentence. And this could be cleaned up and made more effective, but now I'm just testing with one thing. And let's see what happens when I change it. Now it should... I'm gonna put up my landing gear. Landing gear retracted. Wow, I'm impressed. You managed to press one button. Congratulations, Commander. That's my computer for me. It works! It actually sends me messages about what is happening in the game through ChatGPT to me through the audio. Next step, implement every single thing that can change. So it's gonna be going through that list and making sure that I add the stuff that I want there and remove the stuff that I don't want there. Uh, and then I might tweak my settings for the game as well so I don't have like two voices talking over each other. But for now, it's there. Landing gear retracted. You got it, Commander. The landing gear is up. Anything else you need help with? Oh, look who's back again. The landing gear is down, Commander. Landing gear deployed. Try not to forget it this time. Landing gear retracted. Landing gear is up, Commander. I'm starting to think you're just trying to test me now. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. Before I go, I would like to say goodbye to your guests and thank them for watching. If you enjoyed the stream, please consider clicking the like button or subscribing to the channel for more Elite Dangerous content in the future. Fly safe, Commanders.